So, you know, it often happens that I'll be in the airport and talk to someone. They're like, what do you do? And I say, well, I'm a pianist. And they're like, oh, I wish I was a pianist. I wish I'd stuck with it. And usually the reason they give for having quit was that they can't handle two hands at the same time. That the very fact of having two hands made the piano impossible for them. And it's true that it's such an incredibly important part of the pianist's life, this division of the body from left to right. And, and it also is true that, you know, unlike with string players or wind players or, you know, that that division of left and right hands also has a, a larger musical division that comes with it because the left hand usually plays, as I'm sure you know, the harmonies, right? And the right hand usually plays the melodies. Not always, <laughs> but, but often enough that your body that your body begins to become accustomed to these two zones. And and melody and harmony have very different imperatives to them. You know, you know, melodies tend to be individual, you know, and recognizable. Uh, they tend to show off a little bit. Harmonies tend to be common, you know, to a whole style or a period. You know, harmonies are back there. They're kind of the discrete uh, backup band there to make the melody look good. And it's so fascinating how this element of left and right is built into the pianist's life and into the mind and, and the way that you think about things. Um, and then, you know, there are, are all these pieces that try to reinvent the very idea of left and right, you know. And those are so fascinating. There's so many different solutions. There's a favorite place of mine, um, for example, in the middle of a Schubert impromptu, where all the harmony gets put in the right hand, which is you know, reasonably unusual, which kind of rustles away in the middle of the keyboard. There's my right hand relegated to the middle. And then the melody is distributed in the left hand between above and below. The, mel the left hand keeps leaping over and under uh, to do these bits of gorgeous melody. one of my favorite Schubert passages. It's also the way that the melody can never really continue. The left hand tries this and then that and this and then that. And the right hand is never really allowed to help. And the left hand just keeps trying to finish the sentence, which keeps spinning out. The opposite um, arrangement is if you are, uh, well, the slow movement of the last Schubert sonata, for example, um, the melody is in the right hand, stuck in the middle of the keyboard, and the left hand does all the harmony all around. leaping, creating kind of like a halo around the melody. opposite solutions, you know, right hand in the middle, left hand, uh, uh, right hand in the middle doing harmony, right hand in the middle doing melody. And But I think maybe the most beautiful version I've ever thought of or heard is the famous last movement of the Waldstein Sonata. And this one is so astounding because it starts with an incredible hush. Uh, we're finishing the slow movement. The right hand plays this one note. We're waiting, we're waiting, waiting. And then the left hand plays a low C telling us we're in C major. And the right hand rustles in the middle, relegated again to, to accompaniment. For me, 
this message of the left hand playing low notes and then leaping over to play this little bit of melody in the right tells me it has a message you know it says actually melodies come from the harmony you know we draw the meaning of every melody from the bass and he keeps going down to the bass and keeps going back up and he keeps telling us this message over and over again this this need you know that everything is is somehow, somehow draws meaning from below yeah. and most people you know they kind of freak out when you start talking about harmonies but they love melodies and they don't know that you know when they're loving a melody they're actually loving harmonies but that's the way of it <laughs>